right. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just praise you for this day. We ask you, Lord, to bless this offering. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that when we give into your kingdom, it is multiplied back to us. That we can't outgive you, O Lord. And God loves a cheerful giver. So, Lord, we just pray that this ministry be blessed. We thank you, Lord, that the members who give in this ministry, Lord, and those who have not to give, Lord, will be blessed as well. But we want to thank you, Lord, that you'll give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We thank you, Lord, we call forth a hundredfold return at least on every seed that is sown in this ministry. We thank you, Lord, that as we sow seed into the Word of God, as we sow seed to pay the electric bills, we sow seed that the radio waves may go forth, that the books may go out, Lord, that uh, the YouTube may be on the internet, that, Lord, you'll bless this ministry and cause your faith to shine upon it. And though very few show up here at our services, we pray, Lord, that word would get out of the healing touch and the healing virtue which flows forth from this ministry. We thank you for Miss Louise and Mr. Hoyt and Dorothy, my wife and myself. We thank you, Lord, for all the members who've come in and out to come and go. But we want to thank you, Lord, for this community. We bind the enemy that's up over this community. We take authority over the works of the enemy. And we want to thank you, Lord, that you blessed us and caused your face to shine upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise. 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 We used to sing a song or something. Oh, you just passed it to me. Yeah, that's all right. I put it. Oh. Yes, we're going to put it up. We're going to put it again. Thank you. You pray over it. Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you, ask you Lord, to multiply this seed that is sown. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to bless, bless it and cause your face to shine upon us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we know this is the last days. This is the last, last hours, Lord. And we need resources to go forth and preach your word. Lord, that we're blessed to be a blessing. So we declare a thousandfold blessing over this. Some 30, 60, some 100. But in Deuteronomy, I believe it's one or two, and it talks about the Lord God increase you a thousand times more. So, Lord, that we need some big money here in this last day, Lord, that we may go forth and, and preach your word. Because, you know, the, uh, the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. And money talks. And we need some money, Lord, because we've got something to say. And that is the uh, good news of Jesus Christ. He is soon to come. It is uh, May 15th, 2011. We're here at the Praise Fellowship Uncompromised Word Church. And we're located at 1200 North 5th Street. I'm the evangelist Jeffrey R. Winehouse, and I do appreciate you tuning in by YouTube or perhaps over the radio if Mr. Hoyt's recording this. Uh, but today I woke up and the headline read, Middle East on Fire. What's happening today, today is, uh, I believe, May 15th or May 14th, uh, 1947 or 48, Israel was declared a nation state. And uh, that is a, is a fulfillment of Ezekiel 37. He talks about the dry bones coming together as a nation once again. And uh, this was all set up by the British in the 1918s, uh, World War I, the, called the Balfour Declaration. But uh, Israel came back into the land back in 1947. I, I think it's 47 or 48, but it's right about now. And I woke up this morning and uh, the Syrians were trying to enter into Israel in three points. And if you know your Bible, and if you know this, um, that what's going to happen here, folks, is that Damascus, the oldest city in the world, is going to be, uh, and it's prophesied in the Bible, uh, laid in the heaps. It's going to be ruined. Um, we're on the verge of a major conflagration, a uh, uh, big thing going on in the Middle East. And that's part of the plan. They went in the war to break out on three front fronts. The Middle East is one of them. North Korea and South Korea is the other one, and then when all that is going on, China and Taiwan will go at it. Um, two weeks ago, we killed Osama bin Laden, and uh, now the Muslims are upset with us over that. 
Um, you read your Bible. This is coming to pass every day, my friends. Um, perilous times are upon this nation and upon the people of this world. You have the nuclear reactors melting down in China, Japan. You have three nuclear reactors that are in total meltdown now. You're not hearing a lot about that. Uh, last April, you had the big oil spill in the Gulf. Um, the, the waters are being polluted. Uh, folks, we're in the last of the last days. And uh, we need to be about praying and about interceding. Miss Louise spoke on uh, intercession today and how important that is. And we need to be about standing in the gap and, and interceding. There is one will put a thousand a flight, two will put ten thousand a flight. We have enough people in here right now, even though we'd like to have more. But we have enough people in here right now to do some serious damage to the enemy's camp. So what I really wanted to pray about today was, and talk about today is that there is strength in unity. Uh, it says that the prayer of agreement. If two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done of our Father. So as born-again believers, we need to come into uh, agreement that first and foremost, people would get saved. That the gospel of Jesus Christ would go forth and when people come to repentance. He is willing that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. So we need to pray the Ephesians 1.17 prayer, which states that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, we give unto every one of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. That we would know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints is. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he had wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power might, dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet. He gave him to be head over all things, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. We need pray that people's eyes would be enlightened. Yeah. That the revelation of Jesus Christ would come upon people. And when the revelation of Jesus Christ would come upon our enemies, would come upon those who would oppose us. And because we are commanded in Scripture... Not only in the New Testament, also in the Old Testament of Proverbs, to pray for those who, who would come against us, that we would heap coals of fire upon their head. In the Old, I think it's in Proverbs, and in the New Testament, pray for those that would despitefully use us and persecute us and say all manner of evil about us. Um, in the flesh, it's hard to do. But we're not supposed to walk in the flesh, we're supposed to walk in the spirit. So let us not walk in the spirit of flesh, but let us walk in the spirit. So we pray for those who are hindering the, the gospel of Jesus Christ from going forth. Um, these times that we live in, this could be very well be um, the last of the last days. No one knows on earth the day or the hour. Not even Jesus knows. Uh, but a guy named Harold Camping is, um, has a ministry called Family Radio. He's predicting that next Saturday, May 21st, at approximately 6 p.m., the rapture will occur. Well, I don't know how he comes up with his prediction, but I know he's in direct contradiction with what the Bible says, and no man will know the day or the hour. But the point being is that we need to be prepared at any time. Uh, we don't have any idea when Jesus is coming. It might be tomorrow. It might be uh, 10 years from now. It might be 100. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be 100 years from now. I don't think it's going to be 10 years from now. I think it's going to be very soon. But um, we need to be ready at any time, for we know not what a day may bring forth. So be prepared. Uh, be looking up, for our Redeemer draws nigh. The signs of the time are all around us. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, but we just need to be ready. We need to be about the Lord's business, and that is about being getting souls saved and getting people blessed and getting them into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, there is coming a day when uh, he that letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. In 2 Thessalonians, it talks about that wicked one shall be revealed. If you go there, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
I'm going to take my Bible off and my glasses off because I got my little small Bible today. I've got this really cool Gideon's Bible from the 1940s. This is what they gave to the troops before they went overseas. And uh, I know I've heard of stories about people having these in their vest pocket and uh, bullets coming into them and, and the bullet actually being stopped by this. So uh, it, is a, it is a wonderful thing. But 2 Thessalonians, if I can find it, well, how's that go, Louise? Is it, uh, All the T's are together. Okay, so is it after Jude yeah, or before Jude? It's before, it's like Colossians. Okay, all right. All right, okay. Timothy. Um, all the T's are together. Titus. Titus. Before the Titus. Before the Titus. Before the Titus. Okay, all right, there we go. Second Thessalonians. All right, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him. That's talking about the, the great gathering, the, the rapture. That you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. I believe the day of Christ is at hand right now. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Has there been a falling away first? Yeah, I think so. Uh, church attendance is down throughout the land. Uh, people are going to feel good churches, uh, churches where they where they preach a positive message, but they don't preach against uh, sin, they don't preach against, uh, uh, they don't pre preach about the blood. Uh, there has come a falling away, and the word of God is being, uh, it talks about uh, the word having, a, there being a famine of the word of the Lord in the land, and uh, it is exactly where we're at in those days. And the man of sin be revealed in the son of perdition. Well, uh, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's talking about the Antichrist, who is soon to come. Remember you not that when I was with you, I, was, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Letting is to stop or to stay. Uh, and he who now letteth, what is stopping the evil one from coming fully into being is the prayers of the saints, the intercession of the saints. Well, we pray against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are the restraining force of what holds back the evil one from coming fully into uh, his kingdom. But one day very soon, we're going to be taken out of the way. And literally on that day, all hell will break loose because there are going to be no praying people left on the face of the earth at that time. Some people will claim that the Holy Spirit is taken out, but I don't believe it. I don't read it that way. The way I read it is the praying saints are taken out and what is holding back the evil one from fully coming into his kingdom. You know, there are evil one, there are many antichrists, antichrist, the spirit of antichrist is everywhere. But what fully holds us, behold, holds back the evil are the prayers of the saints here on earth. We are, have such power in our prayer. If we can only see into the heavens and see into the, and the unseen world and see what happens when we pray, and then I believe we'd be on our face a lot more. And I believe that we would also be praying a lot more. Um, when the chariots were coming against Elijah and Elijah, uh, Elijah had prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he could see what was going on in the spiritual world. And I just would pray the same prayer that, that the members who are uh, of this church and who are, who are watching by internet or, or, or listening by the radio would their spiritual eyes would be opened, that they may see what happens when we pray. I see miracles every day. Uh, my son was involved in a wreck yesterday after having a truck for less than two weeks, um, spun out and hit a tree. It could have been a lot worse. He could have hit someone else, and uh, he was wearing his seatbelt, thank goodness. But uh, 
the angel of the Lord protected him, even though he's in rebellion and even though he's a typical teenager. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over the children every day. We pray for the children every day. We assign angels about those children every day. And the angel of the Lord protected him and kept him. Um, so it is most vital that we intercede and that we pray uh, not only for our loved ones, but for our communities and for people who are unsaved. So that is my exhortation today is for you to pray. Uh, it says pray without ceasing and uh, to be faithful in season and out season. Uh, convince, rebuke, exhort, um, be unfailing in love. So we're to be about the Lord's business. And what is his business? It's his business is praying. And it's praying the word. It's all about the word, my friends. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning. So what is God? God is this right here. It's his word. And the words you speak are so important. You need to get a revelation of that, uh, of being very careful what you speak out of your mouth. And I, you know, what I, I'm guilty of it is just as well, and I know these things. Um, I had spoke something to Judy concerning our son uh, last week. Uh, that, uh, and you know what? I, I'm partly responsible for, for what happened in this situation. Um, so you got to be real careful what you speak. Uh, because the devil uh, can only take, can only... Um, I don't know, Louise. How do you explain it? Um, Those words that you come out of your mouth, he takes a hold of them, but if you don't put them out of your mouth, there's nothing. That's right. The devil can take take the words that yes. come out of your mouth and, and kind of like gives you, it gives it like a plan, like a, yeah, like a, a clue, you know, I guess, or whatever, like and something to uh, to work on. You have to give the devil permission to attack you. Amen. And it says it uh, talks about. In James, uh, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, the first thing we have to do is submit ourselves to God. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up, but be in prayer. Pray for this uh, nation. Pray for the people of this nation. Pray for the people of the world, throughout the world. Uh, we know that the signs of the times are all around us. Earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquake uh, Friday in Costa Rica, 6.0. Another one in Japan yesterday. Um, the earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And uh, that manifestation is coming very soon. And as we celebrate the uh, 63rd or 64th birthday of Israel coming into the land, uh, the Syrians have uh, come against them. And I'm going to close with Psalm 83. I believe it talks about that. I put something on Facebook this morning inviting people to come to church. And... Um, said that the, uh, the Middle East was on fire and, and one of the people who were on there replied back and said to read Psalm 83. And uh, I read that on the way over here and I think it's very uh, fitting to what's really going on in the Middle East. And I'll close with this. Psalm 83 and of course we read out the King James. Keep not thou silence, O God, and hold not thy peace. and Be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Ever since Israel came into the land, the Arabs have plotted and the Palestinians have plotted and pled against the name of Israel, saying they were going to drive them into the sea and drive them out of the promised land. And even though I don't agree with the Israeli government, nor do I agree with our government in a lot of ways, uh, and Zionism in particular, uh, they are still part of the land, and we are to pray for the nation state of Israel as we pray for this country. Um, for they have consulted together with one consent, and they are confederate against the, the whole Arab world, and even I'm afraid America has kind of turned against Israel too. We have uh, a president who is, is Muslim leanings. Um, the confederate, the tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, and uh, the Higginines, Higginines, Gabriel and Arman, and Amalekic, and the Philistines, uh, with the inhabitants of Tyre. It's basically the whole Middle East. All these countries are different names, but they're all still 
around there 3,000 years ago. Our sure is also joined with them that they have hope in the children of Lot. So all these people are coming against them. We pray that the, the Lord would do unto them as the Midianites and the Caesareas to Jabal and the Brook of Kisim, which perished at Endor and they became as dumb for the earth. Make their nobles like Arib and like Zeb and Yael the princes of Zebel and as, as Zomana, who said, let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession. That's the whole Arab world coming against Israel, my friends. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stumble before the wind. As the fire burneth in wood, as the flame set at the mountains on fire. So persecute them with the tempest and make them afraid with the ice storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and trembled forever, yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. The Arabs worship Allah, and Allah is a false god, is the moon god. And that there is one god, and his name is Jehovah or Yahweh. Um, and the Israelites' god will prevail ultimately. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we do pray for the people of Israel today, Lord. We pray, Lord, for uh, that the revelation of Jesus Christ would come upon them, as well as upon this country. We bind every force of darkness that seeks to come against us, to cut, off, cut them off from being a nation, and cut us off from our blessings, Lord, and our posterity. We take authority over the works of the enemy. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you'll keep us in the land until the day you return. Lord, I just pray for my sister who's been helping us out with our legal matters. Her name is Gwen. I lift her up to you, and I encourage the whole congregation to pray for Gwen. Uh, she's been a great lady, and, and, and uh, we pray, Lord, for, for Louise's family. Uh, we pray for Larry and, and his children. We pray for Mr. Hoyt's children. We pray for Dorothy's whole family. We pray for Judy and myself's family. We pray for Clifford and uh, his children, Quentin, Zachary, and Jacqueline, as well as my children, Trinity, Lee, and Josiah, and Bethany, Kaylee, and Levi. I pray for the mothers as well, Lord, that, that you would protect them here in this last hour. But we pray for the Lord of the harvest more than anything else, Lord, that you would send forth laborers into this harvest. And we pray for the peace of your city, Jerusalem. Your word says, Lord, that they shall prosper the love they did. Peace be within its walls and prosperity be within its palaces. Now we pray all this in the name of Jesus, all with one accord, all with one consent, all in agreement that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you, Lord, that whatever we ask in the most precious name of Jesus, it'll be done, that our joy may be full. We thank you, Lord, for results. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. We thank you, Lord, that every before you to come back, Lord, that people would come to the saving knowledge of who you are. That they would come and fill these pews, Lord. That they would hear and see the goodness of what happens in this house. Lord, it is the Soto's best kept secret. That the power of the Lord is here. That the, that the praise fellowship, when, we, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And that, Lord, as we give you praise and as we give you glory and as we lift you up, Lord, that you'll inhabit the praises of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you need prayer, come on up. We'll pray for you. Miss Louise will pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 H